Happy Friday. This is Kaui Lucas here on Hawaii is my mainland. Today I have Randy Bartlett, who is the, um, let's see if I can get it right, um, Interagency Coordinator for the Hawaii Invasive Species Council. Yes. And that's his official title. But um, what he really is, is this amazing photographer of Hawaii's native birds. Um, although he's a local boy from Oahu, um, Randy spent 30 years on Maui, and um, there are just every native bird I think there is you've, that's alive. Have you gotten them all, Randy? Oh, no, nowhere close. No? No. No? Not all the species? No, I'm still working on it. Okay. Well, l let me just tell you, if you're on Instagram, um, check out Randy's um, feed, because he's RTB808 um, pics. RTB 808 picks. Extraordinary. Um, that's how I got hooked. <laughs> and then, um, and here you are. So, thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. This is part of my ramp up to the IUCN and taking a look at what we're doing here in Hawaii. And what I love is not only is the science side of you going out and finding these birds in their native habitat, um, but they're gorgeous photographs did, did oh, you thank you how did you how did you get there did you just wing it or oh <laughs> uh, winging a prayer <laughs> yeah no i finally finally invested in some better equipment uh, better camera equipment a few years ago and so that that really helped so what kind of you want to talk about that um uh, yeah i got a um, canon um, eos 6d which is like the cheapest full frame camera that they have that they sell and um, got a decent, uh, semi-decent zoom lens, so I could telephoto lens, so I could get as uh, close as I could to, to the wildlife, especially birds are kind of tricky to photograph. Yeah, so how far away from them are you? And let's, let's start, um, let's, let's have a bird to look at, and then you can kind of tell the story about when you were out um, hunting okay. for the perfect shot, which you get. Okay, this is, this is the... This is uh, actually a lai uh, keokea, or lai kea, the white um, coot, Hawaiian coot, uh, one of our native uh, endemic species. And this one is actually taken on Oahu at uh, Kauai Nui, or uh, Hamakua Marsh Complex, on the windward side in Kailua. Um, so it's fairly close, you know, I'm up on the bank and um, shooting down at the birds in the water. So yeah. maybe um, yeah. Here's another shot of the same bird. A few can, yards. A few yards. So if you go by behind down to earth and um, oh, and here's the other one. Here's the, the alai ula, ula. Mm -hmm. the the red uh, red uh, which means red forehead alai ula. So this is the one that um, in the Hawaiian legends that uh, the demigod Maui squeezed uh, alai's throat uh, to to give up the secret of fire. Uh, so he, so. Um, so they could wow. their kappa. And uh, that's, that's how the, it got its red? Is uh, Maui squeezed its throat? Um, the, I think, this, the, as the story goes, and I could be wrong, is that um, uh, it got red from a burnt, uh, from an ember mm -hmm. in the fire. Well, I love how the water has sort of the same quality as the feathers in these photos, Randy. It's just exquisite. Yeah, this one was actually taken at... Um, Kiavava Pond or wetlands out in Hawaii Kai, um, oh. right at the uh, where the Oahu Club is, and there's also a heiau yeah. next door. Yeah, I heard they had some chicks chicks uh, born there of the Alaiula uh, two months ago. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't be surprising. That was taken maybe uh, a couple of years ago. Okay, so how are they doing the ulas, Kea and? They seem to be doing fairly well. I mean, they do have um, their biggest threats are probably um, predation from um, maybe feral cats or dogs because they are kind of ground nesters. Um, so they could be vulnerable on the ground while they're nesting. Yeah, that's why they had to put that, that fence out there at Kiawaba in Hawaii, Kai, right? Because they have those nasty uh, feral cat colonies. Okay, we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, more birds, please. <laughs> Oh. So, you know, so this is a, a Maui creeper or Alawa heel. Uh, this one's a female, um, and it's. A, I, I like the shot because it kind of 
shows how she blends in with the lichens, oh, almost the perfectly. same color and her feathers. Yeah. And this is at Hosmer Grove on Maui in Haleakala National Park. And it's just a little closer version and it might be moving. Now, some of these are, are gifts but, um, and should be moving, but we're just experimenting with the, the, the we're experimenting with the, with the technology here. As always, it's a, a think tech science experiment. Oh, yeah, this these, the working. Apapane, woo, see, that's so cool. Randy, how do you do that? And they're up on uh, Ohia, on the top of an Ohia tree. Um, not too many flowers at this point, but uh, they are looking around, probably for insects too, because they not only go after nectar, but they can go after the insects too, along with the uh, amakihi. Uh, and there's another apapani there. Just gorgeous. So um, how are they doing? Um, they're doing pretty well. The, you know, the apapani are one of the more common of the, of the native forest birds. Um, and they seem to have some resistance, a little more resistance to the avian pox or malaria that a lot of the native birds are um, threatened with. And those are all diseases that are spread by mosquitoes, ah. which we, there are no native mosquitoes. And um, so those things, just like uh, people can get disease from um, tropical diseases from mosquitoes like Zika or dengue or malaria or chikungunya, um, the birds also get uh, avian pox and malaria spread by mosquitoes. And so as, as the earth uh, warms up from global climate change, then their habitat is, uh, uh, gets warmer. And so they are more threatened because the mosquitoes can go up higher to higher elevations oh. um, on the, in the forest where the birds are. And so oh. then they're more exposed to, that, uh, to those disease vectors um, as time goes on, so then wow. their populations are more and more endangered. Wow, bummer. Okay, who's this? Uh, this is another uh, alawahio, a Maui creeper. This is a male. Um, they are a little more colorful than, than, than the females. They've got that yellow kind of chest or breast. Uh, so this one, you can, if you look closely, you can see in his beak, he's got a little bug, a larvae that he picked off the branch of that, um, of that bush right there. I was wondering whether that was beak design or dinner. <laughs> yeah, that's his breakfast, actually. This was taken kind of early in the morning. And um, what did we have? And this is an amakihi, uh, Hawaii amakihi. Um, again, on just a pine branch, but with the lichens in the background. Um, this one is probably a male also, because he's a little more brightly colored uh, than the female females get. Oh, I love this shot. Yeah, this one just, this Amakihi as well, the Hawaii Amakihi, just taking off from the Iliahi, which is a sandalwood, which is a, hale, this is a Haleakala sandalwood uh, there on the left. So it just took off the branch and I was just uh, lucky to kind of get it. So the, the native forest up there where these are taken on Maui, um, is it, is it pretty pristine as far as, uh, I mean, you've got Iliahi, you've got these birds, how, how, how's the forest? Yeah, where I, where I was taking a lot of these uh, Maui forest birds um, are, we're at, uh, as at Hosmer Grove and uh, Haleakala National Park is just past the park entrance. So it's just a little bit above 7,000 feet and it's just at the upper edge of the native forest and right below um, the park boundary there is um, the Nature Conservancy's Waikamoi Preserve, and you get some really nice wet native forest down there. But at Hosmer Grove, you're just right at the top end of it. And so the, the birds come up out of the forest and they kind of forage around there. So it's the, probably one of the most accessible places in, in all the islands to see more of the common native birds, um, to see the really rare endangered birds like the um, QVQ, the Maui parrotbill, or the Kohe Kohe, the crested honeycreeper, um, which are so endangered. I mean, I don't even have those yet, and those are still on my bucket list to get. <laughs> um, but those you have to go down into the really, really nice wetter forest uh, down in Waikamoi Preserve, and those you, you need permission from the Nature Conservancy to do that. Isn't that part of your job, though? You could go right. Uh, it used to be. It used <laughs> to be when I was uh, managing the uh, East Maui Watershed Partnership Program. Um, the Nature Conservancy was part of that partnership, and so was the National Park. Yeah. 
So for um, ornithology fans here, um, we can ornithologists, um, the going to Hawaii, uh, Maui, t up to this Hosmer's Grove sounds like a, a good spot to hang out. Yeah, if you're really into birds and bird watching or you just want to see more, that's, that's really a really good spot. On Maui, it's probably the best place to get to. On the Big Island, you'd want to go to either probably to Volcano National Park and Bird Park there. They've got some really good places there, just all around the Volcano Center area. You'll see native birds. Um, or else also up on the Saddle Road, they just opened up uh, a Mauna Kea on Mauna Kea, a Palila kind of viewing trail. Uh, just opened that up a month or so ago, and uh, I haven't been there yet, but I hope to go soon. Let's see some more. Oh, there we go. There's another Yeah, Apopani. this is Apopani again on the uh, sandalwood or the Iliahi. Uh, do they exist on Oahu? Yeah, there's Apopani still um, and uh, Amakihi and Iivi on Oahu. Not so much yet. Um, you can see Apopani. I was just uh, up on Ka'ala, uh, Mount Ka'ala a couple months ago, um, helping with some snail work. And um, we saw Apopani flying around in the daytime. But the, you can see them in the Ko'olaus as well, but you kind of have to hike a little farther. Um, maybe on the Aiea Loop Trail uh -huh. would be a kind of fairly accessible place for most people to go to. Uh, you can even probably see Elepayo there, the Oahu Elepayo, which are endangered. I I have seen, um, there's the Elepayo in Ainahaina. Oh, what do we have here? This is the this Aoku. Is Aoku'u. Yeah, our uh, black-crowned uh, night heron. This is, um, this is a native species, but it's not endemic or uh, native just to Hawaii. It's a pan-tropical species, so it's throughout the tropics all around the world. Um, they have, uh, they don't call them Aoku'u, but they're black-crowned black <laughs> night herons. Uh, but we have our own, um, yeah, uh, they're not a uh, endemic subspecies. So night heron, they, they, you caught them in the daytime, but they, they do their fishing at night? They, um, they can, they do a lot of, I just catch them in the daytime. I don't know why they're called night herons. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've always taken pictures during the daytime. So, and um, here you are, um, where are you? This uh, was a couple jobs ago um, when it's I like was Kauai, I managing you know, the uh, Pukui um, Watershed Preserve for at Maui Land and Pineapple Company on West Maui. So on the Pukui West Maui, and this is up on the boardwalk, up in the up in the bogs, about a mile high. Very wet, and this is some. Uh, this is a Lobelia Gloria Montes, um, the glory of the mountain. Um, on Kauai, they call lobelias pu'e. That's the only Hawaiian word that, that I know of that survives for the name of those flowers. Mm. Well, um, we're going to take a little break, break and then come back and look at some more of your gorgeous photos and talk about birds. Okay, great. Aloha, my name is Justina Spiritu and I'm the co-host of Hawaii Farmers Series. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson, and you can catch us every Thursday at 4 p.m. at thinktechhawaii.com. What do we talk about, Matt? So on Hawaii Farmers Series, we're going to be bringing on the farmers and also supporter of farmers, including restaurants, caterers, as well as government supporters and nonprofits to hear their background stories and understanding our local ag community just a little bit better. Yeah, essentially there's a lot more that goes into farming and the local food community beyond just producing the food. And we want to feature and get the background story on all these folks and see how we all work together as a community. So join us every Thursday. Aloha. Okay. Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. This week I have Randall T. Bartlett, who is not only um, a phenomenal photographer of the native birds, but he is um, the interagency coordinator for the Invasive Species Council of Hawaii. Did I get that right? Hawaii Invasive Species Council. All right, yes. okay. Well, next time I'll get it right. <laughs> so let's look at some more birds. Um, uh, what do we have? Oh, we're going to talk about the EEVs a little bit. Okay. And, and where, where do you find them usually? 
Um, EEVs are still pretty common on most of the islands, um, Big Island, Maui, especially Kauai also. Um, they're also on Molokai, and they're also on Oahu, though. They're kind of, the population is going down. They seem to be kind of susceptible to, to avian pox and malaria that are spread, uh, these diseases that are spread by uh, vol uh, mosquitoes, as we mentioned earlier. Uh -huh. um, Look at that. that is so, just, that is yeah, you'd, perfect, it'd perfect. be kind of rare to see one on Oahu, but uh, if you went to Kauai and went up to the Alakai or even Kokei, you'd probably see them. Um, on the Maui, if you went up to Haleakala National Park around Hosmer Grove, you'd probably see them. These are all taken um, in Hosmer Grove, either on the trail or sometimes right there in the parking lot. Um, so, yeah, this was right in the parking lot. And um, in the parking lot, this is a great shot because you can see why they have those curved, curved beaks. Right, just to it's get just right going in after there. that mamani nectar, uh, yeah, in the mamani flower, uh, just teasing it out of there. This is a, a, a great show that about um, you know your photographs off, often have them where their food is naturally, and to see why it is so important to take care of of the ohia and the mamani and all those, the native trees because they're the food for the birds. Yeah, the, in fact, for like the palila on the big island on Mauna Kea, you know, that's their, almost their exclusive food source is this, are the seed pods of mamani and so they really need those. This is a juvenile EEV or EV polena or EV, um, um, let's see, um, Popole, I think, as um, Sam Ohugan has told me uh, from the Nature Conservancy. But yeah, this is when they're still young. They're they're kind of uh, they don't get their red feathers yet until they're adults, and but so they're, they're it's yellow, pretty, black, and white. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they get a little green uh, and red, so they kind of almost look Rastafarian. But this one, <laughs> this one, so was they're, a little more yellow. They're teenage rebel years. <laughs> yeah, and you can see he's got a little bit of uh, pollen on his beak, on the tip of his beak. Uh -huh. So as as they're going from flower to flower, they're moving pollen around and pollinating, pollinating the uh, flowers. And, yeah, I need some of those. Doing their part. Um, for my uh, my my fruit, I'm needing pollinators. Maybe I can get some of those beaked birds to fly over to my house. <laughs> yeah, we have to get rid of the mosquitoes first, unfortunately. Oh, the mosquitoes. Okay, so here's this is this dapple. This is amazing shot with yeah. this guy behind, but they're those feathers are. This is an even younger one, and he's still got. That's why he's still got his gray downy feathers on his breast that you can see there, and even on his thigh. So he's really young. He's probably this could be the could have been the first time out of the nest. Um, because he was coming down and looking at me and both his parents were up above in the branch above, you know, above him, like squawking at him madly and pr probably telling him, stay away from that thing down there, <laughs> which was me. They're take, dangerous. Trying to get a picture. <laughs> so um, are, you, are you generally that close? Like you're down on the ground and right by the tree and, and the birds are okay with you being that close? If you're right lucky enough, yeah, if you're lucky enough and, you, and you're patient enough. Now this one I hadn't seen before um, your photos. The Kioea. Um, yeah, this is the bristle thigh curlew, and they're not year-round residents um, mm -hmm. to Hawaii. So you just see them seasonally. Um, now summertime, they're they've they're flown here from the mainland or Alaska or wherever it is they're coming from. Um, kind of like the Koleas, you uh -huh. know, which but fly away. Where do these ones live? Um, well, again, the summertime they're here, and the rest of the year, I mean, they're. I'm not exactly sure on the bottom. But where would I find one uh, in Hawaii on Oahu? Um, this was taken, that one was taken at James Campbell National Wildlife uh, Refuge out in Kahuku. I see. So, okay. and then during the season, and that was taken, um, that was actually taken at the end of the season there. That was in December, end of the year, uh, end of last year. And so it was like, the la they opened it up on the weekends um, when it's not nesting season. So it's closed now. So, you, but you can go on the weekends when it's when it's open from like October to the end of the year, and um, you can go on a little tour. You had some some pictures of that in your um, your Instagram feed. So I haven't been there. Yeah. I, I want to check that out. So the um, so this bird comes. Um, say the name again. The uh, Kioea. Kioea. Okay. Yeah. I looked at that, and there were no. Uh, 
glottals or uh, anything, and I just couldn't figure out how that was going <laughs> to come out. Kioea. Okay, so yeah. what do they eat? Um, you know, they're going after like little sand crabs or little okay. mussels on or, the, or things. Beach. Yeah. It's, and this is another seabird. Yeah, this is the um, Kua'eula, the red tailed tropic bird. Um, these are actually you, uh, more commonly you see the white tailed tropic birds flying up high, but these are the red tails and they're a little, they're a little more endangered. Um, at least uh, on Oahu, their main population is out near um, between Cocoa Head and Cocoa Crater and Sandy Beach, out there near Halona Blowhole right. along the coast. Baba Malu. Yeah, and they just, um, they're just kind of finishing up their breeding season now. Um, so then probably the rest of the year, they might be out to sea and you won't see them much. Okay, so if one goes out to Vavamalo now, you could see them. There might still those. be a few um, with chicks that haven't fully fledged yet, but yeah. And do they nest, are they ground nesters also? Yeah, so they're mm -hmm. also, the, um, that a lot of our, most of our seabirds are, and so, um, that makes them really susceptible to things like rats or cats or dogs, you know, feral cats, or even you know, people go, like what happened out at, at a point where people walked out there with their dogs oh, and oh, they just right. decimated 15 or more Laza and albatross because they're defenseless against those kind of things. Um, up next we have the, um, the, the ducks. Yes, our uh, Koloa Maoli. Our Hawaiian duck are endangered. Um, most of the ducks on on all the islands except Kauai um, are kind of are are mostly hybrid hybridized with uh, introduced mallard ducks. Um, these were taken at um, again at Kauai Nui here on Oahu uh, in Kailua Kauai Nui Marsh. Um, so they're probably hybridized to some degree. Kauai again has the most number of native ducks that are and still pure or mostly pure. And how, how are we controlling that? Um, the, the only way to control it really is to, um, is to, well, yeah, because there's been ducks that have been introduced, uh -huh. uh, mallards and other species, it's, it's kind of tough. They're already out there in the wild. Um, so Can they fly in our island? Can mallards fly from Oahu to Kauai, for instance? Um, they probably can. Yeah, and they probably have, um, but uh, but most of those um, were the ones we have were probably introduced for either right. pet trade or yeah. whatever. We we had we raised them as a, a kid. I had no idea. Yeah, so they don't bring do mallards in. <laughs> bring the white ones in because they don't mix. Or uh, probably not, but they they might they might. Just, just the mallards. Somehow they're close enough to the mallards. Mm, well, the other species might be able to. I'm not sure on the biology. I have to ask and a real expert. <laughs> <laughs> so, how how much time do you get to spend out in the out in the wild with these beautiful things? Um, not as much as I'd like. Probably not as much as I, I used to on Maui, but because uh, that was more part of my day job. But I do um, try to go out on the weekends, in fact. Uh, and these are the, he, these are ones that are close to your day job. These Aww. are Manooku, yeah, these are Manooku chick, or white fairy terns. Um, this is an indigenous seabird, uh, native. Again, it's all over the tropics, but um, here in Honolulu, we're actually kind of lucky on Oahu. We have the only uh, major colony on, on the main islands, Hawaiian islands. The rest of them are all out on the northwest Hawaiian islands, out on places like Midway or, or Laysan. Um, but yeah, these are actually right in the state capital grounds or Iolani Palace grounds. Um, they're Kapiolani Park, UH, Manoa. The population is kind of growing, has been growing since the early 60s. And so um, it's actually a growing population. So we'll I see more of them. I have uh, two, two pairs in um, where I live at, at Pia this year. Mm -hmm. What is so extraordinary, and I never, I couldn't tell because I can't see up close like you can, um, that, that 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 little branch that, I mean, somehow the, the egg balanced on that branch and it hatched and this little chicklet is able to hand, stay on that narrow little branch. 
Yeah, they're, they're, that's the same bird that was in this previous shot. It's the same chick and it's just a little younger here, but they don't build nests. These birds don't build, uh, build nests and they just lay the egg right on a flat spot or a depression on a branch or on a building or on a rock or on the ground even on, on the Northwest Hawaiian Islands. But here they, they tend to do it up in the trees where they're a little safer. And yeah, the, the chick will hatch right there at that spot where the egg was laid and stay there pretty much until it's fledged. Um, once it gets a little older, it'll start to move around up and down the branch a little bit, but it pretty much just hangs out right there and until it gets fed and it gets its flight feathers. And oh, look at that. It's yeah, so it's practicing already. So adorable. It's just ridiculously cute. So th they are such a great um, uh, mystery to me that, they, that that little chick can hang out on that narrow branch for, for what did you say, six to eight weeks? Yep, about there, a month and a half or so or a little bit more. Wow. Um, and they, again, are ones that are, um, so the, the big pressures um, on these birds seem, seem to be cats and rats. Cats and rats primarily. And, and mosquitoes. And, right, and also, yeah, diseases for the, for the forest birds, especially it's um, avian diseases, bird diseases spread by mosquitoes. So we're gonna wrap up with the pueo which has made the evening news last night. How's yeah, that? That's yeah. pretty neat. Yeah, I guess so. Where so, uh, were these? Um, these again were also um, at Haleakala National Park, uh, Hosmer Grove. This is the the headwaters of Waikamoi Gulch. They're right near the end of the the little nature loop trail they have, um, and it was just a pair of them, us just flying around in circles around each other for a little while, and I was managed to get a few shots. That's luckily. that's pretty good. I mean, I've seen pueo from time to time on on different islands, but I've never seen. A few of them at once. Yeah, yeah, usually they're singly, but sometimes yeah, you'll have the pairs flying around each other. Uh, Big Island, you can you can probably see a lot of them, uh, a lot of shots from the Big Island photographers. Of Puel. And um, how's their habitat doing? They're doing a little better, I think. They're they're raptors, um, but they also the the main problem is they're ground nesters also. Okay. So they're not building a nest in a tree, they're on the ground, and so then they're also uh, susceptible to predation from cats or dogs. Thank you so much, Randy, for coming and showing your gorgeous photos. Again, your Instagram feed is rtb808pix, P-I-X. And um, you're, um, you've started a, a, a new venture, which is the the Hawaii, endangered Hawaii photography. Right, that's what I'm kind of, um, that's gonna be a little bit of a side, okay. side job for me. Thanks, Randy, see you again soon. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha.